So, um, uh, anyone who doesn't know me, please come and introduce yourself afterwards, and uh, I'll be glad to uh, be familiar with uh, everyone who attends uh, here today. Um, I only got 20 minutes, so um, let's keep the questions for the last part. I hope I, I get enough time to answer them. Um, this is about Konapi. This is uh, a current project that I'm currently working on at work at Booking.com uh, with my boss, uh, Stephen Lill. Um, I reversed the order of this talk because I understand the first thing I need to explain what it is, but I decided to start with the status. Um, because when I committed to give this talk, I didn't know if it's going to be about something I did or something I'm working on or something that I completely failed to do and just learned a bunch of things from. Uh, so this, the status, I'm happy to say, is that this is uh, almost done. We're uh, almost uh, doing a, a real, uh, real use uh, test case at work and uh, it's going to be released. Uh, to, to CPAN um, as, as a full distribution. We are currently working on GitHub, so uh, I'll later give you the, uh, the link and you can also check it out for yourself. So, what is Konami? If anyone is uh, familiar with uh, JSON API, uh, JSON API is a collaborative effort to standardize the way that clients and servers uh, exchange information uh, in, a rest, uh, in a restful uh, environment. And if you want, uh, please check the spec. Uh, it's not that long. It's about an hour uh, of your life, but it's worth uh, spending it. Um, they have a very nice website with uh, examples and the spec itself, uh, some uh, uh, answers uh, about some questions that are usually coming up when, when you read this back. Um, this is the, the website and from the name JSON API uh, we just know that we're not going to implement this in JavaScript. There are multiple uh, implementations uh, in many different languages. Uh, there are uh, serve both servers and clients in, in JavaScript, Python, Ruby, PHP, uh, .NET and so forth. So we just remove the JS part because it's not JavaScript and shamelessly put a P for Perl, even though Perl object notation doesn't mean anything. It's just we just like it, so we kept it. Um, the idea of this whole thing is to eliminate the byte chain. Uh, let me go back five years before I joined Booking, I, I, I didn't do web at all. I, I did uh, house for uh, an embedded system, low level stuff. It was very straightforward. I got specs from hardware designers. It told me what they need. I implemented it in C or assembly. Um, there was no need to discuss how we're going to exchange the data between us. When I started doing web-based applications, I find, and I, and I did many of them in the last five years, I find that every time, every new project I have to renegotiate with the client-side de developers, because I'm not a client-side developer, I'm a back-end back developer, you don't want me anywhere near your JavaScript or your HTML, so I always have to work with someone else, uh, or even with the same people, and always go through this process of deciding how am I going to send you the data, how are you going to read it, uh, and what are you going to send me back. I see this as a complete waste of time because it's a lower level. In terms of the application, it's a lower layer. Like, why should I care? Like, we're, we're not negotiating how the IP or the MAC layers are going to work or which frequency the RF is going to send the data. We don't care. So, this project, um, JSON API, not ours, is trying to address exactly this problem and give us uh, a standard which, if we stick to, we don't need to go through that. We just care about what we're passing to the other side, it will know how to parse it, how to read it, and so far, 
it looks very nice uh, for our internal uh, testings. Uh, we like it. So we're eliminating this. We're trying to kill this. A little bit about the spec. I didn't go into much detail because really it's a, it's a full spec. You have to read it and, and it takes some time in, in a 20 minute slot. I cannot do that. But basically what the spec does is it defines everything that the client needs to send the server in order to perform query. Basically, basically it's all about fetching resources or doing some updates or deleting or all the CRUD the operation actions on resources on the server side and getting back uh, responses. The spec describes all the errors, all the actions that need to be done uh, and the responses, everything that you need to, to worry about when you, when you do that. I'll give you some examples uh, of queries, how they look like. So, just to get a small taste of this whole thing. A normal query will look like this. It will, uh, if you have uh, an HTTP GET request uh, for fetching resources, of course, uh, you define uh, the path as it starts with the type of the uh, of the data. Let's say this is representing your table, or uh, yeah, it should be a, a representation of the table. ID is the identifier, so the two of them together identify an ex exactly one resource in the database or your uh, data, whatever layer, because we don't we don't really care how it's stored on the server side. And you can also provide a bunch of query parameters. There are some more um, options uh, which. I'll mention it soon, so it's not the complete uh, phase, but this is like the standard uh, command. Um, first example, which doesn't have the ID, it's just a request. We have a database of articles. Articles have uh, some information about the article itself. It has uh, an author, which is a different table in our system uh, of uh, type people. Uh, so an article has an author. Um, and it has a bunch of comments, which is also everything. Uh, if you want to see the database that we use for this example, it's with the distribution itself uh, provided as a mock-up of, of a database, so you can actually run the code and see all of it. Um, get articles will give you the entire set, and according to the spec, this is how it should pretty much look like. I hope that everyone can read. Can you read it from the back? Other than Rima? <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, what you get back from the server is what we call a document. A document uh, is an object, it's a JSON object. Uh, it has a key that defines the, the exact version of the protocol that we're using. And it defines, uh, it has a key uh, that is called data, which holds all the resources that we just pulled. In this case, since we asked for more than one, we will have an array, a collection, we call it, and in it, every entry will be one resource uh, which has the identifier, it has a type and an ID, uh, and it has a bunch of other attributes, you can see them as like the different columns in the table, and it has relationships. The relationships are basically telling us what other resources of other types also relate to this uh, resource. We have, uh, optionally, and you don't see it here, but we can also have links which, which tell us exactly how to fetch this, like self or the other uh, related uh, resources. Uh, we can have meta, which basically is like a, just an open hash that you can put in whatever you want if you want to add some more custom data between the server and the client, you can also use meta, and meta can be in almost every layer, uh, level. So it can be on the document level, it can be on the attributes, on the relationships, on the resource itself. Uh, even errors can come with uh, some metadata if you want to, to have some more information uh, in pass. Um, next example is exactly the same, we're just asking for sorry, uh, a specific ID, so we'll get the exact same, but now the, uh, the data part is just uh, one object, it's not a complete array.
array of, it's not a collection. Um, this is how the spec defines it, so we just stuck that. We might make local changes for it, but as, as, as long as we're talking about Panopi and the external distribution, we're sticking to the spec. We want to be compliant with the, the spec. We can add some more query uh, parameters. In this case, include what in, include tells us is that we, aside from the resource that we just queried, we also want the resource for the related uh, data. In this case, the author. So, in the previous example, we saw that we have a relationship for this article to a people, uh, an author um, object, and we ask for this back. We can have multiple relationships for all sorts of uh, data. It can be for comments, for authors, for, for a lot of things. What we get now is another um, top level key included, which gives us back the resource or a list of resources that are related to our uh, article. By the identifier of each one, the idea and the type, we can find them in the included. So basically, this is like a join uh, kind of thing. One of the things that the spec supports is the using of the um, square brackets to also fine tune the query. Uh, another uh, acceptable parameter is fields, which tell us which fields in the uh, results that we want to see, basically which attributes or relationships we want to see for this uh, specific uh, resource. Uh, in this case, we define that articles show body and title. If we had the include, we can also define the fields for the uh, author, for the, for the comments or whatever. Uh, other worth mentioning but not showing here uh, parameters are uh, paging parameters, uh, sorting, filtering, and we have some uh, few more. Uh, one decision that we made for now, we're not implementing sorting, we're, we're disregarding it because uh, one of the things we learned um, at Booking is doing sorting on server side is something that we don't encourage to do because database CPUs are much more expensive than uh, app CPUs. So we rather do sorting on the on the application uh, side, keep the databases running in uh, order of uh, n and not uh, something uh, that is a bit slow. This query will return a shorter result set because we only ask for body and title for the for the attribute, so you can control what you're getting back through the query. Another one is an indirect query. This means that I want to get the author as the resource, but I don't know the ID for the author, for the author but I know the ID for the article. So I go through the article, identify it with the ID, and then I ask for the relationship type, which is the author. There is another way of getting just the relationship itself. It's just adding the word relationships as well as uh, another uh, level between the ID and the relation uh, type. This will produce a data resource which is the author, not the original um, resource. Next I'm going to talk a little bit about the implementation. So we, we built this distribution as a, a collection of, of, of tools. Uh, we started with the document builder, uh, which you can, you can use each of them separately, implement your own or do whatever you want. Uh, it's not uh, very hard to use them separately. The, the main thing is that for the database layer, you will always have to implement your own uh, or define your own. The, the one that we started with was the document builder. It's built um, as a as a builder's uh, design pattern, so basically it will always, we, we make sure that it will always produce a valid document that you can send to the other side, even if it contains errors or whatever uh, is the result of the processing. So basically you create an object of a builder, you throw data at it or uh, add stuff to it, and then you will get back a valid document. Uh, 
our implementation of the data layer and the client are all taking care of this. So if you use them, you don't even need to worry about that. We have we built everything with Moose. Uh, one because of Steven, and uh, two because it really allowed us to do some of the interesting uh, stuff without uh, so much worrying. And, and for me, even if this project uh, would be a total failure, at least I learned a lot about Moose from Stephen. Um, some of the code looks, I mean, this is a thing the document builder, uh, some uh, interesting Moose stuff. The server. We built the server with Denser 2. We are using the latest features. So we are dependent on the query parameters, row parameters, all those things. But we are wrapping those things um, in, the, in the application itself using some um, plugins that we created. Some of them are going to be released separately because they are they're good for the JSON API spec, they're not specific to, to Ponapi as, as a package. So the first two that are mentioned here, the media type, which just takes care of the content type uh, of the document uh, coming in and going out, uh, even though we're uh, passing JSON, the content type need to be for the JSON API. Uh, I don't even remember how it looks like, there is some it's a string. Uh, so this uh, plugin takes care of that. It can be released separately from Bonapi. Uh, the other one is params. It basically makes use of all the routing uh, parameters, the query parameters, uh, builds uh, everything into one uh, structure that this uh, application can use. Uh, it's basically a hash which is registered as JSON API parameters and it's been just pass down to the data access layer and uh, we don't need to worry about that that much. This is basically like half of the server code. Like with the with the uh, with the plugins we don't need to write much more. We just need we use it as a thin layer just to pass uh, just to call the the proper action on the data layer and just pass the, the arguments down there. Um, the last one is a repository. This one is specific to Ponapi, so uh, I'm not going to release it separately. I'm just going to keep it as part, part of the distribution. What it does is just on load of the plugin, it will load the object uh, that is uh, your implementation of the database access. Uh, it will register under a common uh, name, which is the DAO, and basically it takes the it takes the the module that you decide this is the implementation of my uh, repository layer uh, from the config. So the one thing that you have to do in order to run it is just defining your config, which is this module, and, and, and everything will work as long as you just implement the interface, the, the basic few uh, methods that are required in order to make it work. The DAO is just a, it's just an access layer. It's basically it's a role that, that just forces you to implement those uh, methods, uh, but everything underneath you have to implement yourself and register that uh, object, uh, that module in, in the config. We have a mock-up uh, object there, so out of the box you can use it to test and, and, and play a little bit with it. The client itself, Maybe completely redundant for you because this is the client side. We we use it for internal stuff, so the client side is all, also going to be written in Perl. It's being executed from modules, but of course there are many other uh, clients in many different languages. Uh, I'm assuming most people will need like a JavaScript-based uh, client, but it doesn't really matter as long as it speaks uh, in that language. Then there is no problem. Um, an example for the code, this is how easy it is to do the same retrieve. We just create a client object, define what, what it needs to uh, do in the retrieve action, just type the ID, the fields in order to, to do the, the same filtering that we did before, and you will get back a result 
that looks like this. The, the difference in here, uh, the interesting thing is that this is already after a full cycle, a request that went from the client through the HTTP layer, sent with a hype to the server, to the Dancer server that I have. Everything is running locally, but still, it does the entire end-to-end, uh, -end, uh, coming back as a JSON, serialized, and dumped here um, to the screen. You can see that in the server logs, this is how this request looked like. It was the uh, articles with the ID, the fields, this is the square brackets, and uh, the commas uh, encoded uh, in the URL. And with that, I finished my 20 minutes, two minutes late, but I hope it's okay. <laughs> uh, if you have uh, time to check it out, look at the GitHub uh, repository. We'll be happy to get uh, uh, questions, ideas, uh, some help if you want to help. It's just a, uh, a project that is being worked on at the moment. We're not completely sure how it's going to look like at the end. We're just going with what we feel that we need from it, but maybe others have more interesting ideas. Uh, so we won't be too opinionated uh, towards uh, our internal stuff. And you can also find me in the CPAN uh, at Wiki. Um, and if we have some time and anyone has questions,